Hello, this is Miss Moore. Today during chemistry, we're going to talk about the discovery of the electron and the nucleus. Um, today you're responsible to know who discovered the electron and the nucleus, what experiments they used to discover the electron and nucleus, and to understand the data and how they interpreted the data, leading again to the discovery of the electron and the nucleus. All right, here we go. We're going to start with the discovery of the electron. Okay. Thompson was a scientist that was actually not even studying atoms. He was studying electric current. Okay, and really quickly I'm going to scroll ahead and show you a picture. This is a, a quick picture of his um, experimental setup. We'll go back and talk about it. Okay, so what he did is he took a glass tube, okay, a sealed glass tube. He pumped all the air out of it so it's completely empty. It's a vacuum. There's nothing in it at all, not even air. Um, there were two metal plates inside this tube, and he applied voltage to these plates. Um, basically, the way he did that was connected the plates to a wire and the wire to a battery. Okay? And he called the um, anode, the po was connected to the positive voltage of the battery, and the cathode was connected to the negative voltage of the battery. Okay, so a quick look at this. So here we have our empty tube, our empty glass tube. Okay, we've got the anode, which is connected to the positive part of the battery. We've got our cathode, which was connected to the, to the negative part of the battery. Okay, so he hooked, he hooked this voltage source, this would be your battery here. He hooked this voltage source or the battery up to these two plates. And what he saw were rays of light. Okay, so here are these rays. They're not necessarily rays of light, but they're these rays. Okay, the, basically the tube started to glow. So rays emerged from the cathode, so emerged from this end here, and went towards the anode. Okay. And he had a hypothesis, and if you remember, a hypothesis is an educated guess. Okay, so he thought that these rays were beams of light. All right? So now, because this is a hypothesis, a good scientist is, of course, going to test this hypothesis. So let's look and see what he did. All right. So what he did next was he placed a small paddle wheel inside the tube. Um, you can think of a paddle wheel like a pinwheel. Okay, I can't draw at all, but let's say, oh, that's not good. Let's try that again. Okay, so there's something like this. Okay, that's supposed to be not a dead spider, but a pinwheel. Okay, so we put a pinwheel inside the tube before he emptied out all the air and stuff. Okay, then when he turned, when he plugged in the, the battery to the metal plates, the rays started going again and the pinwheel started spinning. So let me, let's think about this for a minute. Um, take a, think about taking a pinwheel and holding it up to a light. Does the pinwheel start pitting, hit spinning? It shouldn't, right? This, the pinwheel will spin if it's in the wind or if you blow on it because what's happening is that particles are hitting the pinwheel and causing it to turn. Light doesn't, is not made up of particles, so if these rays here, ah, if these rays that we're talking about right here, these rays were really light, then the pinwheel should not have started spinning, okay? Which means that his hypothesis was wrong. These, this, this beam is not a beam of light. It's a beam of particles. I mean, they may be glowing, but it's a beam of particles, all right? Right, so since he found out that that beam, that ray, was not a ray of light, but ray of particles, he tested further. What he found, he, he, he ran a magnet. Well, let's go to here. He ran a magnet, okay, the pause right here, the positive part of a magnet, along the, um, along the glass tube. And what he saw was that this beam started moving towards a positive magnet. He then removed the positive magnet and he put on a negative magnet. So this guy's gone. And what he saw was the beam went away from 
the negative magnet. Now, if you remember, negative charges don't like other negative charges, but negative charges like positive charges. Okay, so now, what does that suggest? Because the ray started um, at the negatively charged cathode, Thomson guessed the particles were negatively charged. Okay, that was his guess. What he found, like I just showed you, um, these particles were deflected by a magnet, right? Um, they went towards the positive part of the magnet away from the negative part of the magnet, all right? So he said that means that he thinks that these are, ah, he thinks these particles are negatively charged. Okay. And um, he called these particles electrons. I'm guessing the reason they called them electrons is because he was studying electricity. So electrons are neg have a negative charge, but atoms are neutral. Now remember, they don't know what's, what's the atoms made up of at this point. They're still studying it. So Thompson thought that it's true that, that they're a negative charge, but because of that, something in there must be positive. And that brings us to the discovery of the nucleus by a guy named Rutherford. That's his last name. So Rutherford discovered the nucleus of the atom. Um, and he had this crazy experiment. Okay, he took a thin piece of gold foil. I mean, think of gold foil. It's, it's like, you know what aluminum foil is, right? It's a really thin bit of aluminum. Gold foil would then be a really thin sheet of gold. Okay, so he took a really thin sheet of gold which is right here. This is the gold foil. Okay. He had this he had this little machine that shot out positive charges. Okay? And he shot it at the gold foil. And this this thing, oh, the this circle right here is a sensor. Because the particles were so small, he couldn't see them, but the sensor would let him know what was going on. Okay, so he shot these, gold, these, these positive particles through the gold foil. He thought they just passed straight through. Okay, so here's, this is what he thought. He expected the positive um, particles to pass through the foil without changing direction very much. Okay, so here are these positive particles passing straight through. Okay, and these particles are teeny, teeny, tiny, invisible. In fact, they're basically protons. Okay. So he thought the particles and mass were evenly distributed throughout an atom. So he's looking at this as the at an atom of gold in the gold foil. And this is what he thought the atom looked like. Okay, just, just like a blob with little negatives everywhere. And so he thought that this is the positive beam that he was passing through. And he thought it would just shoot right through to the other side. Okay. So again, here's, here's not just uh, one atom of gold. This is, this is like here, the gold foil. All of these atoms here are the gold foil. Okay? So he thought it looked something like this, and so the, the, these are all these positive beams are just passing right through. Okay? But what really happened is as the positive particles were going through, most of them went through, but some of them were bounced off. Can you see them bouncing you know, being deflected at a funky angle, okay? And he thought, what the heck? Why would that happen? What would deflect or make a, a positive charge bounce back? It would have to be a positive portion at the center of the atom. Okay, sorry, I made a mess out of that. There must be something, there must be some positive portion. He thought it was small, because if you look back at this again, let me erase my mess, you can see that most of the particles passed right through. Only a few bounced off. The ones that are deflected are the ones that bounced off. Most of them went through with only a few bouncing off, so he thought there must be a very small area at the center of the atom. He called that the nucleus. Okay. Yep. That was a mess. He called that the nucleus.
And that is how the nu nucleus was discovered. He didn't know at that point that there were any neutrons because he was only dealing with charges. That's it for today.